Hi guys, how you doing? Austin Mengler here with another video for you. This one is for the illustration called On the Hunt. Uh, it goes from the rough layout here to the final illustration. Okay, here we go. So, this is a creature design I did for a film project quite a while ago now. It was probably like um, 2011 that I submitted the final little uh, illustration um, to my university lecturer because I was able to submit this as a university project in my illustration class. I actually had Justin Randall as the lecturer teacher uh, who does his Changing Ways graphic novel which is an amazing book that you should check out if you haven't already. Uh, but yeah, this was a little creature design I did for a UK director uh, and now I've, I've kind of signed an NDA, so I'm not allowed to go into the details as to what the director's name is or what the project's called or the film that uh, may yet still be greenlit is called, but I can show you the uh, final product of my work and the creature design and the monster that I created for it. So here he is. Um, he's, a, he's a creepy little fella, isn't he? Um, and, you know, it, it starts out as quite a creepy fella, but as I go on, he um, I beef him up quite a bit and make him more of an alpha male of the pack kind of creature. Um, so, yeah, this creature design was like a combination of mammal and reptile uh, components. Um, he's kind of like a raptor saber tooth hybrid. Um, and it was kind of the first time I'd done a whole creature design process, working uh, closely with the director to try and get something we're both happy with. Um, I did a lot of concept art originally of, um, you know, gorillas and like lions and kind of different animal inspirations. Um, you know, if you're ever trying to think of really cool creature design or creatures to make up, um, just look at the natural world. I mean, it's so fascinating seeing all the animals and like Mother Nature is such like, Mother Nature is the best like creature designist out there, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, I, I was working with the director of the film. Um, we would talk on Skype chats um, about the art direction he would want. Um, and it was, you know, it was quite a while ago now, but I'm glad I did it because it was a great experience. And um, although there wasn't any upfront payment or anything, um, while I was still studying and stuff, um, you know, that wasn't an issue. And it was definitely worth doing it for the experience. I probably wouldn't do it again now because now that I'm more experienced as an illustrator and more into the business, um, you know, it's better to, you know, come to a point where you can say, okay, it's time to stop doing jobs just for experience. I need to start doing stuff that can, you know, um, progress me in my career. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping to do now with all this other stuff. Anyway, um, this is a really cool illustration that I did ages ago, um, but um, I yeah I finished it in about 2011, and then in about in like 2012 I touched it up considerably, uh, changed the colors a bit, and made it a bit more um, a bit more cinematic, a bit more nicer to look at, a bit more lighter, and a bit more colorful. Uh, the one you see here is quite uh, desaturated as I'm getting in the values and just building up his neck and his muscles and all that but yeah the final print if you're familiar with it because um, I have been selling uh, the print at my supernova conventions um, that I go to um, somewhat regularly now um, I exhibited at a few conventions last year uh, and I'm hoping to do a lot more this year um, and yeah you know if you, if you like this, then come to the next Supernova I'm at, and you might be able to get a print of it for cheap. <laughs> There's my little plug there for my conventions. Anyway, um, yeah, this image here is, yeah, it's interesting to see the process. And I'm sorry that this is um, quite a while after I've finished this one, because um, I did finish it quite a few years ago, and I'm only doing the process video for it now. So... Everyone's like, why? Why is that? And it's because I didn't really actually realize I had this recording saved. I submitted this recording as part of the illustration project um, to show my tutor. 
and yeah, I recently went through all my old university files and found this recording. I was like, oh, okay, I've actually got the, the file here. whoop de doo So let's show it on the web and show everybody my work. So that's what I'm doing. Now, as you can see, I've kind of kept all the details around his face and his eyeball. Um, and that's a really interesting, um, a good way to get like a focal point in a picture. And again, with um, his eye, his... Uh, his eye is quite yellow and detailed, and the rest of his body is very blue or grey, so another little tactic to use to get the viewer to look where you want to go. Um, always good to use colour and detail as a focal point and a emphasis on the picture. Um, I guess now that this is quite an old illustration of mine, I can go and try and critique it a bit and maybe say some things I should have done differently. Um, I guess uh, I probably could have gone and tried a few different compositions before settling on this one. Um, it's kind of something I need to work on actually. Um, I tend to jump at the opportunity to start having fun detailing and fleshing out a character when maybe I should be spending more time making sure I get the composition down and making sure I get it right. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do now in my work because, um, you know, composition and um, thinking about space and negative space and you know how things look on the page and what's eye-catching that's all just as important as having an interesting character and an interesting creature because um, you are creating illustration and you are creating something that you know needs to look good but also needs to you know be a strong a strong composition so that you can get across any sort of story that you're trying to portray so that's what I'm thinking about now more in my work. Um, the recent Game of Thrones pictures that I did, uh, I did a set of six uh, White Walker illustrations for Game of Thrones. It's kind of like what would happen if the White Walkers took over the show, and so it's some of the main characters as the White Walker zombies, like Daenerys and Tyrion and all that. Um, but yeah, you can, all, you can also check that out on my various websites, DeviantArt. Uh, on my Facebook page and whatever, but yeah, I just wanted to say those compositions are. I I tried to think more about the composition and y use of white space on the page. Um, so yeah, I guess I could have done that a bit here. Maybe I should have uh, zoomed out a bit more, shown more of the room that the creature is looking into. Um, maybe that would have made it more interesting visually, because um, I tend to like to crop things close up so I can have a f like close up of the face and or get some details in there. I much like drawing monsters and their, their faces and stuff and grisly details like all the blood like, like what I'm doing right now but composition and all that is just as important and so that's what I'm trying to do now with more of my current work. Um, so here I am just applying a, bu a bunch of blood splatters. You know me, I love my blood splatters, and this piece would not be an Austin piece without blood splatters. I'm trying to get get away from that stereotype because I, you know, if there's one thing I overuse, it's probably blood splatters in my work. Um, but I always try and incorporate them into the piece and make them complementary uh, and not distracting to the work. Um, going a bit crazy with the white highlights there, um, and yeah, his jaw is kind of annoying me now. It's like, I probably should have tried flipping this image a bit more. Um, a good way to, like, try and get the, um, you know, make sure your picture is the right proportions either way is to, uh, select your canvas, uh, flatten your whole image, and then flip it horizontally so that you can check uh, how it looks uh, the other way around because um, as you're drawing something it can be really easy to get a you know comfortable view of it and you're used to it and then when you flip it it all looks different and you can you know your errors really become apparent really quickly um, so I should have probably done that um, I don't know it's it still looks good but I think that jawline is a bit a bit screwed up. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really 
going to town on his face. Um, I don't know. I, I like the illustration. Um, if you've seen the rest of my work on this project, um, I've done three final illustrations for the creature. I did this one, which was the cinematic kind of illustration to show him in the scene, kind of like what it would look like in the movie. Um, although, thinking about it now, a good way I should have done it is to have like a widescreen shot, like an actual movie still. Because, um, yeah, if you think about cinematic illustration, it was really to like get the sense of the feel and the tone um, and the dread and like, you know, the scary horror ele element of having this this monster hunting you and trying to find you and, you know, he's got blood on him so he's obviously just killed someone, maybe one of your friends and he's, you know, now he's after you. Um, but I think I would have, it would have, you know, it would have been better if I'd, um, you know, put him in like a frame of a movie, like a landscape frame with the black border around it, the film, that is. Um, so maybe I should have done that. Anyway, um, so I did that one. Uh, that you're seeing now. I also did the profile view, which is kind of like the whole body of the creature. Um, although I do admit that the creature in the profile view is probably a different creature, a, cre a different um, a different size and weight than this one. I wanted to show a few different sorts of the creature, like um, because obviously there'd be um, several, well, not obviously, but in this film that there will be several different ones. Uh, and this one in this cinematic illustration is kind of the alpha male, whereas the one in the profile view on the side, that's more of a female, kind of more leaner and more, um, you know, more a bit skinnier and a bit faster and quicker. Um, but yes, and then I also have a three-quarter view where it's in a cloudy kind of farm kind of setting. Uh, but yeah, and you can also see all of my process for this um, illustration and all the, I mean, all the different sketches for the creature design itself on my website. So if you go to my Facebook page, you can see it, or my DeviantArt, um, and you can even buy this print online at my um, Society6 stores and all that. Um, so now I'm adding some atmosphere, or trying to. Um, you know, this was quite a while ago, so it's... I'm not doing the best job. Um, if I were to do it again, I probably I wouldn't use the brush at such a small um, size compared to the rest of the image. Um, it's better to use texture brushes and cloud brushes and stuff to get atmosphere at a very large size brush, so that you know the texture can still read when the picture is quite small, because um, it does look a bit like a bunch of Photoshop clouds at the moment um, and I'm trying to detail the clouds too much um, the good thing about these texture brushes that uh, give you little shortcuts is that you can really just plonk them down um, at a large size and they'll do the work for you and then it's just a matter of um, deciding where to plonk them down um, you know you still have to do the work obviously but um, I think I'm trying too hard to make them look pretty when I should just have put a big few splotches of cloud around and it would have done itself. Um, so here I'm using a little bit of a photo texture to uh, do the moon. Um, now, you know, it's always best to use your own photo textures and as I was rushed and stuff, this is one just from the web. Um, you know, it's something I really have to knuckle down and do myself, get a good camera, do some photo textures and all that. Um, but yeah, I mean, photo textures, um, they're a bit hit and miss, um, but as long as you use them um, minimally in your illustration and if they don't, you know, detract from the image or make it look, like, completely jarring, like if you've got a really painterly picture and then you put a photo illustration in and it just, the detail is completely different, it's going to look really weird. Um, but I like to think that this one, it kind of works. Um, but yeah, anyway, here it is. Hope you enjoyed it, um, and I'll see you guys next time.